So welcome Zain. Zain Drana, he is from UK, founder of Daffy Protocol. He is a global keynote speaker, foreign exchange market analyst, crypto investor, creator of the Daffy Protocol. It's a new inflation model to create stable decentralized finance and blockchains. The World Congress speaker. And he is going to make a founder talk. He will be talking about the growth challenges he has been experiencing as a founder for his project. Go, Jen. Hi, guys. Um, so I've got actually a presentation to show you all. Um, I'll keep it quite short and sweet. So I'll start off by presenting my screen. Can we confirm if they can see the screen? Hello? I can see it. It's okay. So you're showing to us. I can only hear your audio. I can't actually hear anybody else's. Okay. Any problem, Jen? No? Uh, yeah. My screen is visible, right? Yeah, it's fine. Oh. It's visible. Clear. Awesome. Um, so, um, as it's already mentioned, my name is Zane Rana. Uh, I'm the founder of the DAFI protocol. Um, we've been working in self mode for a number of years, testing different monetary theories, monetary values, um, building something that we think will change the very foundation of decentralized finance blockchains and how Excuse we. Me, Jane, your voice is very low. Could you speak louder? Low. Or you get the mic closer? Okay, how, how yeah. about now? Uh, now it's better, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Okay. So yeah, um, we will be talking about the change in transition is the function of all of the blockchains, decentralized finance, um, liquidity in DeFi, staking with blockchains, etc. And how we'll be modifying and transitioning that into this demand pegged inflation model. Um, so yeah, as I mentioned earlier, it's only three pages. We're going to keep it really short and simple. Um, if you have any questions, we've got material on our website. We can join our social channels. We have some amazing partnerships we're going to be announcing over the next few weeks, um, as well as our marketing campaign and quite a lot of awesome stuff going towards our launch. So yeah, let's get straight into it. Okay, so I think first it's important to define inflation. Um, where you lack trust in these decentralized economies, inflation is how you maintain the network. If you take an example of Bitcoin, Bitcoin itself has its own inflation. It releases new Bitcoin for miners to validate transactions and support the network. Um, we commonly talk about inflation in centralized finance. You may hear people talking about the value of your dollar declining, etc. But inflation is very real even in blockchain and DeFi. Um, but it's not necessarily a bad thing. It's how you incentivize trust through value. It's what Bitcoin's main utility was. So if you look at the graph on the right, this is a typical model of how it's done. Currently, the foundation of all of these decentralized economies, whether it's DeFi, blockchains, etc. Essentially, you have the only way to reward early users, whether it's early liquidity, early staking, etc., is by issuing out a massive token reward rate. So, for example, if you were a DeFi protocol or a DeFi application, you would create a pool or you would reward people contributing liquidity through your own token and also, if you were, for example, a blockchain protocol and you were going to reward people to stake, to participate in the network, you would issue out the core native network token to do so. Now, the issue with this is that in periods of low demand, which every single one of these economies will go through, i.e. an infancy stage or with low adoption or a bearish market like we saw in 2018, almost all of these um, standard types of creating decentralized economies will experience what we call hyperinflation essentially creating excess supply uh, relative to the low demand in the protocol. So this is currently how it's done um, in all of the 
industry around us, it's a topic that isn't that much talked about. Um, but we'll talk about how we're transitioning this entire approach by using a demand bonded curve. So as on, on the right, you can see um, on a simple level, how it works is DAFI, which is our core token is staked, which issues out a DFY. Now DFY is a rebase token. Many of you may be familiar with rebase tokens like Ampleforth, etc. cetera. Um, what's different about DFY is that it has no value. It's not tradable, it's not transferable. Its sole purpose is to be, rather than peg to fiat currencies or stable coins, is to peg to other protocols demands. Now, the reason this is so exciting is because DFY in its first, in its first iteration, in its first level, would be pegged to DAFI's own demand. So when the protocol is in low value, low demand, early phases, bearish markets, the inflation is very low, preventing hyperinflation and making that impossible. Now, the way this is going to change all the foundation for all decentralized economies is because it's able to actually reward early adoption, early users, etc., as the protocol or economy grows in demand. Because as the DFY secondary token is pegged to the native token, the primary DAFI, as that goes into demand at a higher period, as in, let's say, less people selling, the utility of the network grows, etc., um, DFYs will expand, rebase positively, and increase in quantity. So it rewards early adoption, early users without high issu issuance rates or high inflation rates. Now, this goes beyond just DAFI. Um, what will actually happen is in 2021, uh, we will launch the ability for any decentralized economy, any DeFi application or blockchain protocol to create XDFY. Now, X denotes what their own demand would be. So for example, Chainlink would create um, D-Link, um, Bitcoin could have DBTC, etc. These are just arbitrary examples. This doesn't mean anything. But my point being is that they would be able to modify and actually adopt a demand pegged inflation model. They'd be able to reward early adoption, early liquidity, early users without high inflation rates. They'd prevent excess supply and essentially would unify all of these decentralized economies through a far more sustainable and more economical model. So uh, final slide, as I mentioned, I wanted to keep it really short and sweet. Um, this is a, just a standard um, a workflow of how it would work. Um, essentially, DAFI is staked for these synthetic um, elastic units called DFYs. DFYs worth nothing, have no value. There is no risk in terms of exposure to rebases, as there are with other rebase type of approaches. Rather than pegging to a stablecoin or a fiat currency, it's pegged to the protocols on demand and any blockchain, any DeFi application can create their own flavors. And this is basically adopting this demand bonded model. So we've actually, um, we've actually been in stealth mode for a number of years. So when it comes to growth challenges, um, we know it with first hand experience. DAFI itself was a self funded project primarily on research and development from around 2018. Um, in that time, we've tested so many different models. Um, we've essentially worked on stealth mode, developing things, um, testing different models, finding flaws, and doing tons of research to get to the point where we're at right now. Um, so when it comes to growth challenges, working in stealth mode, bootstrapping, um, from personal experience, <laughs> I know that really well. So um, yeah, it's um, it has been a challenge, but I think I'm a big believer in results over talk. I'm a big believer in bettering the entire economies that we're all creating and exposed to in DeFi, blockchains, etc., cetera, um, and really questioning the very model that they're all built on the foundation it's all built on. Um, and yeah, um, we are in a pretty good position now, quite fortunately, we've got our launch coming up soon. Um, we've got some amazing partners who have been helping us in stealth mode that we'll be revealing to the public over the next few weeks. And uh, we're planning to now transition out of stealth mode to go public. So these growth challenges, although they were early issues, and I think they will still be apparent as they are with all projects. Um, it's definitely been a, a journey one to remember. So, uh, yeah, um, if there is any more questions, I don't know if we're doing Q&As, um, but I will stick around anyway. I've got a panel next um, and I'll stick around to hear the other projects talking. But I do recommend joining our social channels, so our Telegram, our Twitter, etc. Uh, get involved in the project, see what we're building. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all. Well, Zane, you're finished. Yep, I am finished. I don't know if I'm early or late. I wasn't keeping track. Okay, then. Uh, thanks for the presentation. I think uh, uh, we will make. Uh, I think now G will make the presentation. Uh, hey, everybody. 
I'm GM, Chief Magic Officer. Uh, uh, one second, one second. Chief. Okay, yeah. Uh, now we have uh, Z to win co from Dubai with the chief magic officer Hemi Swap, DeFi addicted and NFT genius. So 14 years of experience in business, five years in VC, and four years in crypto. And he has launched approximately 20 blockchain projects. And he brings magic to EMI, Hemi Swap, AMM DCX users. And uh, he'll be disrupting uh, the DeFi from the traditional financial sectors. He'll be advising this. So go ahead, Z. Oh, thank Make a you. Presentation. Uh, no, I would not share the presentation. Probably I would uh, share some of my screens. Okay, uh, fine. I'll, I'll try to uh, be short as well. Thank you, uh, actually, they, uh, Zane. It was really nice to hear about this project, and I think we should cooperate after the all and actually I, I would uh, like recommend to cooperate with everybody in the blockchain because we have a stake in 2017 when all of us just distracted and have some lambas and blah 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 but now it's time to be more mature and actually the DeFi and the NFTs are the new black for me and uh, a couple of words about the Amy swap and Magic uh, Cars NFT so uh, as Malcolm said before, they in the King Swap just started to create the product that will combine the DEX and the uh, NFTs. But we in our Amy Swap just created that product. Actually, uh, why Amy Swap just um, and another actually Uniswap fork? It's it's not just an another Uniswap fork because we have created our Uniswap exchange as as uh, the community-driven platform. So all the profits from the DAX, MSWAP go on to the users for the holders of ESW tokens. And I was blooming and dooming. Why uh, should I, uh, why uh, could I do with NFTs in, in DeFi? And actually before that, in 2017, it was just like pictures or some photos in NFTs, but, um, my thoughts was that uh, I should create a product that will combine in a synergy NFTs and DEX. And that's why we created magic cards that works inside DEX. So if you are just using MSWAP without the NFT cards, you're getting your um, profit from the holding or swapping or liquidity providing as well. Uh, as actually doing the um, Uniswap or Muniswap or a lot of puzzles. But if you have your magic card, it would improve your earnings on the platform. So if you have this uh, mag uh, magic cards, you have more profit on the platform. Of course, I was inspiring from uh, an old games like Magic the Gathering or Hearthstone or actually Fortnite. So all the mechanics I uh, took from the Fortnite, because we know that it is super popular uh, platform. My kids playing all day long this Fortnite and, and buying some um, uh, battle passes and some stuff from the game. But still, if you're buying uh, the this um, kind of um, game uh, inventory, it is not. Um, influence on your uh, actually the gaming mechanics so when I was uh, thinking about NFTs and the um, best stories in all these ICOs and blockchain projects why did they suck and uh, it's because they ruined their tokenomics so our magic card NFT do not ruin the uh, tokenomics of our ESW token uh, as I said before, uh, we're mixing the game and mixing the earning. So ours just a short slogan is earn, play, collect, uh, and farm. So we mixed uh, the gaming uh, theory and the gaming community with the crypto community. 
Uh, that's why I see here a lot of opportunities as well for mixing and involving people in crypto and actually showing people uh, how deep NFTs are. Because we're starting from game, but as was said before by Joanna and Malcolm, it's only the start because a lot of things you could do with your NFTs. And that's why we're developing uh, the cooperation and collaboration with a lot of projects. Actually, as said before, OpenSea and Rarables, we're still in, in conversation with them. And uh, actually, in the stealth mode, we are conversating with a really potentially huge market for NFTs in Japan and Korea. And we'll announce this a little bit later. This probably would be the biggest NFT platform, uh, NFT marketplace in in the Asia region. I'm sorry. <coughs> and just to uh, make a bottom line, I see a big market, a really huge market for NFTs. And I, actually, I see it's a future DeFi market, one of the biggest for DeFi as well. So a little bit later for everybody who is interested in to communicate because I, I don't want to sell something right now or just promote something right now. I'm just here to say, it, uh, to say that uh, we're creating the community-driven platform, community-driven AMM for the people. And actually, we are, uh, I won't be shy. I, I think we're creating the best uh, synergy uh, platform for NFTs and AMM right now. And my goal is to create it the best. But uh, I think that key is in cooperating with other projects, other platforms, because our strength is in, in cooperation, not in disrupting. And it was mistaken in 2017. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your attention. And I'll be ready to answer all your questions or have uh, some networking after that. Anyone have questions? I think Z, I think you're going to be in the, uh, in the panel discussion. So there the questions will come up so we can have a great discussion. So thank you, G, uh, for the presentation. Yeah, and we end the session. We go for the panel.